10 gigabit networking, is it worth it? Well, QNAP sent over a QM2 2S 10G1T, which is one of their 10 gigabit networking and M.2 accelerator cards for their uh, TS. Uh, 253B NAS, but ASUS also sent over their XGC100C, which is a pretty decent value solution for 10 gigabit networking using a PCIe X4 connection, actually both of them do. So if you're interested in 10 gigabit networking, let's find out if it's actually worth it. I should clarify that since we're talking about if it's worth it or not, I should clarify the prices here. So this uh, QNAP card, which is mostly for their NASes already, uh, is actually about £200 at the time of filming, not including SSDs, and this ASUS network network card is a thing about £100 which actually isn't too bad for a 10 gigabit network solution. Both of these cards are making use of 10 gigabit ethernet so even standard Cat5e cables will work, trust me I tested it, so don't worry too much about that, as long as you have a decent enough quality cable you should be fine. And of course do bear in mind that unless you are actually uh, you know, getting a 10 gigabit switch to go with it and stuff like that, you're mostly just going to be using this with a direct connection between your NAS or storage solution uh, or you know PC to PC kind of thing rather than actually through a network like your standard ethernet. So for me, I mostly envision this as useful for content creators like myself, where you're gonna have a NAS like this with a lot of files, you know, a lot of uh, video files that you're gonna store on it. And instead of having multiple copies, you know, on your local hard drive for editing, and then a backed up copy on the hard drive itself, and obviously you, you'd normally have two drives in here anyway, so technically you got three copies of the same file in the same building. Uh, you might want to just run that with, uh, you know, all your files on your NAS and you can edit straight off of it. Now with gigabit ethernet connections it is possible but especially on higher bitrate co uh, you know, content and especially on you know 4k files and stuff like that it does get pretty difficult to do so with 10 gigabit networking it does make that a lot easier. Now to give you just a rough idea of what the benefits may be for a 10 gigabit networking solution I'm going to be using Adobe Media Encoder to render out a Premiere Pro project that I recently or actually about a year ago did for a QNAP Nash review. Now I'm going to be doing three different tests here, one on the local hard drive, all of the same files, uh, one on the NAS with the 10 gigabit networking interface set up, and one with the 1 gigabit network interface set up. It's going to be basically the same test setup. I've actually recorded all of the testing that I did. So if you want to see the full, uh, you know, full, I think it's like an hour long worth of testing, then feel free to let me know and I'll do an unlisted video of it. But nonetheless, uh, we're going to be testing that and seeing what the different render times are. I should also mention that I was actually using a WD Red 6 terabyte drive in both the NAS and the local PC. So those two uh, conditions were the same as well. So as I said, I did actually end up rendering this video probably a good 20 or 30 times to get multiple tests results and I was also testing with the QNAP uh, card with the caching on which didn't seem to work very well and had to reset stuff but uh, either way nonetheless I did multiple rounds of testing on the 10 gigabit interface the 1 gigabit interface and the local area storage as well including obviously with the caching turned on as well which is what you're currently seeing here are the main results though, you'll see that the render time for the local is just a little bit faster, about 2 seconds faster than the 10 gigabit networking, whereas the 1 gigabit networking was considerably slower. I would also put a bit of a caveat that this is only a 1080p project and doesn't really stress out uh, the connection massively. I don't have proper 4K footage that could potentially stress this out, even the, the stuff that I recorded on my OnePlus 3T isn't high enough bitrate to fully stress this, but it does give you a little bit of a taste of why it might be better. So as you can see, we are doing a little bit better using the local storage here. Now that's not too surprising, obviously, while SATA is only six gigabits per second, it is also closer and a faster protocol than running over ethernet. So even though you're still you know, running a slower connection, it's not that much slower and we're also not massively bottlenecking the actual connection by what we're rendering here. So that's something to, to bear in mind. Now, as you can see, the one gigabit connection is the slowest overall, and that's kind of to be expected. It's not massively slower, but of course, once you start getting into those higher bitrate files, and especially higher resolution, higher bitrate files and stuff like that, then you will start to see a lot of a bigger gap here. Just as an interesting note, by the way, for this QNAP QM2 card, I did actually turn on SSD caching for the render files so that I could see if that could actually do any benefit either. And it turns out that it actually made it slower in most accounts. I tried both the, you know, both the ways that you can set it up in read-write and read-only for uh, accelerating random and sequential I.O. and it just 
didn't seem to like it, didn't seem to work. So uh, if you are trying, uh, planning on using this specific card, I wouldn't bother using SSD caching as a you know a sole kind of way of speeding everything up. Just use the 10 gigabit networking and you should be good. And of course, 10 gigabit networking isn't only for content creators. There are plenty of other uses available, but in something like this NAS solution and with this more budget 10 gigabit networking solution from ASUS, you are looking at more sort of consumer friendly options rather than, you know, enterprise level stuff. And therefore I thought I would tackle this on a more, you know, what people are actually more likely to be experiencing rather than data center workloads and stuff like that. So hopefully this has been interesting for you. If it has, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. And of course, if you have any questions about 10 gigabit networking or this QNAP card, let me know in the comments down below. If you want to know any more about the QNAP card, I'll leave the video that I did last, I think, Friday on the end screen. And of course, feel free to check it out on the channel yourself if it isn't there. Uh, and otherwise, that's kind of it, really. Hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful and informative. If you did, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed it, feel free to subscribe as well. If you want to support me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday basis, then please do use the Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links in the description down below. I'm also kind of working on the idea of a Patreon, so if you're interested in that, then feel free to uh, leave some comments on what you think I should do for the, sort of the, the benefits you are receiving. Um, let me know in the comments down below as well. Otherwise, that's kind of it really. I hope you enjoyed it and found the video useful and informative and we'll see you all in the next video.